Hi, and welcome back. I frequently hear from beekeepers that they just don't have the time to make the various equipment, tools, and gadgets used in the bee yard. Well, here are three projects, each of which will take less than 10 minutes to complete. The projects are various cages that I use when working with queens. They are the queen cell protector cage, a pocket queen cage, and a queen introduction cage. All of them are simple to make, and all of them will take 10 minutes or less to complete. So grab a cold one, put the cell phone on the kitchen table, and join me in the beekeeper's workshop. The queen cell protector cage is a simple tubular gadget made out of number 8 hardware cloth. The cage is about the size and shape of a hair curler. The cage is used on a grafting bar to protect the developing queens. Safely enclosed in the cage, the new queens will be easy to find. More importantly, the queens will be protected by the cages from the first queen out, whose job one is to go around and kill any potential rivals. I slip a protector cage over the queen cells a day or so before the queens emerge. A simple wire harness keeps the cages securely in place. After the queen emerges, I can remove the cage, queen and all, and take her here to the workshop, where I can mark her and get her ready for transfer to the mating hive or introduce her directly to a queenless hive or split. All the time, the queen is securely and safely confined with no chance of flying off to her fate. The queen cell protector cage is cut from a scrap piece of number 8 hardware cloth, which is a wire mesh with 8 squares per inch. This wire can be found as a woven wire mesh or a welded wire mesh. The welded wire mesh is much stronger and the one you want. Cut a piece about 2 and 3 quarter or 3 inches square. The size is not particularly important. Using such a small piece is one reason why you never throw away scrap hardware cloth from other projects. You never know when you may need it. I use a 3 quarter inch conduit as a form to roll the tube. However, any small piece of round stock, such as a 3 quarter inch wood dowel, would also work just fine. I like to have about a 3 8 inch overlap on the mesh. That's 3 squares. So trim if necessary. The 3 8 inch overlap is enough wire so that I can prevent the tube from unwinding with a couple of small wire ties. I am using 18 gauge aluminum wire which works well for this purpose. I can't get my fingers inside the cage so a small pair of needle nose pliers helps. After tying the roll together, trim any tag ends of the ties. Although the wire twist ties will probably hold the cage together, I find that a couple of spots of solder along the edge works a lot better. On this cage, I am going to solder the two wire ties and two additional spots toward the middle of the overlap, a total of four places. Use leadless solder available in any hardware store. Before soldering, put a dab of flux on the spots to be soldered. The job of the flux is to draw the solder into the mesh and bind the layers together. Without flux, the solder may beat up on the top and not make the kind of join you are looking for. Some solder has a flux core, so you don't have to apply flux separately. The trick with soldering is to allow your soldering iron to get good and hot. Touch the coil of the solder to the iron and pick up a small drop of solder. It doesn't take much. And then touch the cage mesh where you have the flux. The solder should flow into the wires of the mesh. Check the inside of the cage to make sure that you have soldered both sides of the mesh together. Finally, we need to make the bottom of the cage. Use a small pair of wire cutters and make a series of one half inch vertical cuts up from the bottom end of the cage. 
Make these cuts about every three-eighths of an inch or every three squares. So that's four squares up every three squares over. Then bend the strips together forming the bottom. I use a short piece of wood dowel to tamp down the bottom from the inside to get a sharp bend. You can solder the bottom together if you want, but I find it is not necessary. There. Job done in just over five minutes. One of the nice things about making your own beekeeping equipment is that you can tinker around with modifications and maybe come up with a good idea. The queen cell protector cage we just made is obviously used for grafting queens. But what if you want to protect a young queen that has been raised naturally by your bees? You know, the kind of queen cell hanging down from the bottom of a frame? The cage we just made doesn't work so well in this situation. However, here is a simple variation on the theme that does. We have made a protector cage just like we described, but also formed a top. Then we cut an opening on the side and bent the flaps out, sort of like two shutters on a window. For good measure, we added a loop of wire through the top, just above the flaps, to help pin the cage into the comb. Now we can slip this cage over a drawn queen cell and keep her safe and sound until she emerges. A pocket queen cage is another really handy gadget that is easy to make. Whether carrying a queen to a hive for introduction or having to grab a queen out of an existing colony for whatever reason, I'm always surprised at how often I use a pocket queen cage. It pays to be prepared. First, I would like to thank Dr. Roger Hoopengunner, Professor Emeritus from Michigan State University, for showing me this handy gadget during a queen rearing class I attended. Roger's class was the impetus I needed to take my beekeeping journey to the next level and begin raising my own queens. A pocket queen cage cannot be much simpler. It is a small piece of number 8 hardware cloth bent into a long rectangular tube. Two wood plugs complete the cage. One is permanent and the other is removable. Like the queen cell protector cage we just made, a pocket queen cage takes only a few minutes to make and uses scrap material from the workshop. You may notice that this queen has been marked. She is on her way to a mating nook. The cage is small enough that I can easily slip her into my pocket, hence the name, and be on my way. I've used a pocket queen cage to introduce a new queen into a hive. You just slide the cage down between two frames of brood. After a couple of days, pull the plug and let her out. I have also introduced a queen by plugging the end of with candy and letting the workers release the queen by eating out the plug. Curiously, when I put the candy plug in the cage, the queen almost always quits her frantic running around and begins to feed on the candy. You can see her little tongue at work. Kind of neat. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do is to make the end plugs. On the table saw, I set the fence 3 eighths of an inch to the inside of the blade. I'm using a scrap piece of 1 by 8. We need a couple of two inch pieces from one of the blanks to use as the end plug. Now we turn our attention to making the cage. From number eight hardware cloth, cut a piece about six inches long and about two and a half inches wide. You will probably have sharp little wire stubs sticking out along the edges that you cut. Trim these off. I am using one of the wood blanks that I just cut as a form to bend the hardware cloth. Try to get a good crease on the corners. I am shooting for a 3 8 inch overlap. That's three squares of the mesh. The cage will tend to unroll when you are done. As we did in the queen cell protector cage, hold the wire together with a couple of wire twist ties.
There's one. And the second one. Again, just like we did in the previous project, solder the cage on the wire ties and a couple of spots toward the middle. Make sure your iron is good and hot. See how the flux just draws the solder into the wire? Finally, we install the wood end plugs. Slide the permanent plug into the cage and secure it with a couple of staples. The removable plug is carved by hand to make a slight taper. You are looking for a good snug fit. I'm leaving about an inch of the plug sticking out so that it is easy to grab. Done. One pocket queen cage. Time is just about nine minutes. Yeah. Our third and final project for the day is a queen introduction cage. The queen introduction cage is sometimes called a push-in cage. Some beekeepers think that this cage is the best way to introduce a new queen. The cage gives the queen a bit of room to roam around, and if she is mated, the queen can immediately begin to lay eggs. A laying queen is almost always accepted by the colony. The queen introduction cage is simply an open box-like affair made out of number 8 hardware cloth. The size is not particularly important. In fact, I like to have several different sizes on hand so that I can deal with the very situations faced in a beehive. So if you're introducing a new queen, wanting to protect a naturally drawn out queen cell, or need to confine a queen while working in your hive, use this cage. For something so simple, it works amazingly well. As with the other three projects, we need a small piece of number 8 hardware cloth. Size is not particularly important. I'm cutting a piece 4.5 inches by 4.5 inches. Because the size of the cage will be 5 eighths of an inch deep, I'll end up with a finished cage about 3.5 inches square. Trim any wire stubs along the edges. The size of the introduction cage need to be high enough so that about 3 eighths of an inch of the cage is above the comb after you've pushed it in. I find about 5 eighths of an inch works out about right. This means that I'm going to make a cut 5 eighths of an inch from each corner and 5 eighths inch long. That would be 5 squares in and 5 squares long. These cuts let me make the edge in the next step. I like to cut both tabs on the same side of the wire as shown by the red lines in this drawing, but it really doesn't matter. You want a good sharp bend on the sides of the cage. I am using a hand seamer, which is like a pliers with a super wide set of jaws. I use a hand seamer when bending the aluminum for hive top covers, so it's a handy tool to have. With the seamer, it is easy to make sharp bends. However, you can just as well use the edge of a table or maybe a small block of wood to bend the wire. Now it is a simple matter of bending over the four tabs to complete the box of the introduction cage. And just like we did in the other two projects, I am using a small wire tie on each of the four corners to secure the tabs. After the last corner is done, I am trimming the tag end of the ties. 
And also like the other projects, I'm using a small dab of solder on each corner on the wire ties to hold everything together. There, finished. A push-in style queen introduction cage in just under seven minutes. Well, there you have it. Three projects. A queen cell protector cage, a pocket queen cage, and a queen introduction cage. Each uses the scrap pieces of number eight hardware cloth that otherwise would see the trash can. Each uses the old soldering iron, and each can be completed in ten minutes or less. Hard to beat that. Hope you enjoyed this session, and we'll see you back in the Beekeeper's Workshop. <laughs>